you tell what an artist's worldview is just by looking at their art? Let's consider the worldview of naturalism. On this view, there is no mind, no spiritual dimension, no soul, no God, no afterlife. Our lives are just bits and pieces of stuff. Let's look at the art of American artist Ellsworth Kelly. Born in 1923, passed away recently in 2015. He had a career spanning over six decades. In 2011, when he was close to 90 years old, he was interviewed by the actress Gwyneth Paltrow. In reflecting upon his view of life, he said, I feel this earth is enough. She asked him if he was religious, and he answered, I'm not even a doubter. I'm an atheist. A bit further on, he said that if he believed in anything, it would be nature. So it's easy to identify Ellsworth Kelly's worldview from his own words. He accepted naturalism. So let's take a look at his art. In the 50s, he created a series called Spectrum Colors Arranged by Chance, numbers 1 through 8. Now he didn't actually paint anything on these pieces, but he used numbered slips of paper, and each number corresponded to a color. And he set up some parameters ahead of time, and as he drew the numbered slips, he would pick the corresponding color and apply it to a grid. Please note two observations. There's no identifiable subject matter, and the emphasis is on the design, on the colors themselves, and on the process by which he created it. From 1966, here's his piece, Red, Yellow, Blue, Number 3. Referring to these large multi-panel works like this, he said, The form of my painting is the content. My work is made of single or multiple panels, rectangle, curved, or square. I'm less interested in the marks on the panels than the presence of the panels themselves. Again, you see these two same characteristics. There's no identifiable subject matter, and the emphasis is on the form, or in the artist's own words, the form is the content. In other words, what you see is what you get. There's nothing deeper to dig for. The existence of the color itself is the meaning. Here's a piece from his Chatham series, which is an upside-down L-shape composed of two canvases attached to one another. This is a Chatham 3 Black Blue from 1971. Again, no recognizable subject matter, and the emphasis is on the design elements and color. Here's a shaped panel piece called Green Panel from 1980. And another shaped panel called Red Panel from 1982. And here's one more, more recently from 2009 called Blue Curves. From 1986, here's three panels, orange, dark gray, and green. This installation actually spans 34 feet of wall space. But as large as this piece is, and as large as the panels are, it still offers no identifiable subject matter and the emphasis is on color and form. From the 90s, here's Orange Relief with Green from 1991. Now this one's got two panels, one panel on top of another. But two panels doesn't give us anything more to see because there's still no identifiable subject matter and the emphasis is still on the design elements, again, color and the form. Why do we see this pattern? If there was to be identifiable subject matter and the emphasis was to be on something other than the design, then that would lead us to assign meaning to the piece. And remember, in naturalism, our lives are only bits of stuff. It's a matter-only view of life. Only matter exists. Michael Govan, director of the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, said of Kelly, no other artist has pursued color and form as relentlessly and purely as Ellsworth Kelly. And I agree. His art is the most consistent visual representation of naturalism I've ever seen. Every piece is preaching a message that matter is all there is. In a quote from 1996, Kelly said, My paintings don't represent objects. 
They are objects themselves and fragmented perceptions of things. In his own words, Ellsworth Kelly had said, this earth is enough. And the question is, is it enough for you? There's one final piece of Ellsworth Kelly's art that's being created right now. I took a photo last week of the construction site where this chapel he designed is being built on the University of Texas campus. Now this is really interesting. Why would an atheist design a chapel? We'll take a look at Ellsworth Kelly's Austin next time.